career in finance is often perceived as working in a bank. Young people are not much aware about the limitless opportunities and career choices offered by a financial sector. Today we have with us Ms. Jaya Jacob Alexander, the Chief HR of Geojit Financial Services Limited to talk about the human resources in a financial sector. Welcome Ms. Jaya. Hi Agla, nice to be with you. Um, why would one join a financial services company? Financial sector including the banking services actually constitutes one of the highest employment rates in India since 1999. So the employment opportunities in this sector is pretty high. Uh, for first time job seekers, you know, actually they don't look at, uh, they are really not aware, you know, whether a company is an investment services company or an NBFC or a broking company. They, they are not aware of such things. Only when they enter into the job and then later catch up with the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, activities of the company, they really realize whether they are working for an investment services company or not. But for experienced candidates, actually they look for um, companies which offer them, uh, which meets their aspirations, you know, in terms of good remuneration, position, and above all the culture and the value fit with the company. So um, today investment services company uh, you know enjoys a very good reputation among the uh, larger public and uh, uh, people uh, feel proud about you know coming uh, to work in such uh, companies. Unlike you know there was a time when working for a broking company or for an investment services company was not considered uh, that lucrative, uh, people used to prefer working for say bank, engineering, uh, field, uh, engineering field or, prob or uh, um, uh, even today the preferred field is bank as well as the government sector. Yeah. But uh, today um, investment services companies also uh, have a, a good reputation uh, and people do love to come and work with such companies. What skills do you prefer, do you look for in a candidate? Uh, to uh, join a financial service company because everything that happens in the world is somehow affects investing business and one must work under strict regulations too. So what skills you look for in a candidate to join a financial service firm? In an investment services company, you know, the candidate is actually dealing with the money of other people. So self-discipline is a must, uh, coupled with I would say uh, integrity and honesty. Uh, the opportunities to um, missell, the opportunities to mishandle the funds of clients are pretty high. So, a uh, sense of self-discipline is very important in any candidate, which at uh, uh, during the course of an interview or even through a psychometric uh, test, we may not be able to identify. But uh, this is one quality I would certainly want in my candidates. Secondly, you know, they must have, they themselves should have uh, an understanding about savings, what savings is all about. Huh? If they have an uh, um, inherent habit of savings by themselves, they will be good advisors and they will be able to uh, advise clients how to save and invest in um, different investment avenues. Thirdly, I would say uh, this is a highly, you mentioned about this being highly regulated. This industry requires a lot of certifications which are mandatory. So learnability is an important uh, requirement for a candidate. They should not merely think now that I have passed graduation or post graduation, nothing more to study that I have uh, uh, done all my uh, studying as of now. Now it's my time to em get employment and earn money. No, that uh, doesn't happen here. Here continuous learning is very, very important especially in acquiring the different certifications. Every now and then we get new certifications added to be taken. Uh, so, they should definitely have a um, skill for learnability, maybe uh, unlearn what they have learned till now and learn new things. Mm -hmm. Then um, reading habit, you know, they should definitely catch up whether uh, through newspapers or through online magazines or through TV news, they should catch up, they should update themselves with what is happening around them in the local areas, in the uh, nationwide as well as in the international arena. Because uh, uh, we find that you know a lot of, um, uh, lot of uh, impact happens in the capital market because of something happening somewhere else. 
So, uh, clients also would be wanting to know uh, why such changes are occurring and our advisor should be in a position to share with them such uh, uh, you know um, uh, changes which is happening around us. Uh, one has to uh, really be uh, concerned about the clients and uh, keep a track of their uh, investments and advise them appropriately at appropriate time, times and uh, they should have good communication skills. You know, uh, it is not enough that they learn a lot of things and they acquire certifications, but they should also have the ability to talk to people and the people can be just strangers also. Uh, it is not necessary that they should be known people. So, they must have that willingness to go out, meet people, talk to them, uh, take that initiative to talk to people, you know, and uh, the initiative to introduce them to uh, what capital market is all about, what are the different avenues that are available in the capital market. So, the willingness to uh, communicate both verbally as well as uh, through email or through uh, you know um, writing is very, very important. Uh, can you tell me any certification that is mandatory to work in a financial system? Oh, there are actually a lot of uh, mandatory certifications which is now in place depending on the profile of the, um, uh, you know, the employee. Somebody who is handling derivatives must necessarily have a derivative certification. Somebody who sells mutual funds should have a mutual fund uh, uh, certification. So, every, pro, every role has uh, different certifications attached to it. I must say that, you know, um, uh, for a long time, even before these certifications became mandatory, we used to insist that our employees should acquire these certifications in order to equip themselves with industry knowledge. But now it has become a must, you know, it is, uh, it is something which is inspected by the uh, regulators to ensure that people who uh, work in this field has the necessary certifications. Uh, entry level candidates often complain about getting rejected because of not having any prior experience in this field. So, do you prefer any prior experience in hiring a Actually, candidate? we would prefer to take uh, uh, candidates fresh from colleges. Now, they are more moldable. We can teach them, uh, you know, our, our uh, company's way of functioning, the culture of the company, etc. But there are positions which requires experience also. As to your question, uh, why do uh, fresh candidates get rejected? It's not because you know the, they don't have the knowledge. We look at their attitude and their communication skills. If they're bad at these two things, you know, then rejections do happen. Financial literacy is less when compared to other countries. So, how much of candidates' knowledge do you assess during a recruitment? It would be really nice if people walk in with good financial literacy. Um, yeah, if I remember rightly, you know, in my childhood days, we never used to have any pocket money or anything like that. But our school used to have a Sanjayika scheme. Yeah. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, I also yeah. was a part of that. <laughs> Sanjayika scheme is a um, kind of a post office deposit scheme, wherein some agent will come to our school, collect money from us. Of course, we used to take money from our parents and give it to them. for. But then the school had that scheme and it used to inculcate a savings habit in us. Such similar, um, you know, savings habit should be taught in schools, should be taught in colleges is my view. So, that will uh, definitely evolve into some kind of, you know, basics of uh, financial literacy for students, which will definitely, you know, uh, go a long way in their um, life as well. So, peop candidates who come with financial literacy is most welcome because, you know, they will easily gel into our system. Uh, much of uh, the training and on the job training etc can be saved if they uh, uh, come with that kind of a knowledge, but it is not very easy to come by. Okay. Geojit has been into this field for like past three decades. So, have you done any project uh, to enlighten public with financial literacy? Oh yes, um, I would say that in the late 1990s. Um, and after 1995, between 95 and 2000, when NSDL in introduced a dematerialization, we were one of the uh, pioneers to push people into dematerializing their physical shares. That campaign was later, uh, you know, uh, yet another campaign that took place later was in the uh, was in 2005, 
uh, when we st started doing financial literacy programs in colleges huh? and even in high schools, you know, got, uh, having got encouragement from the uh, response in colleges, we started doing in higher secondary schools also. We had dedicated teachers also to conduct such financial literacy programs. We also focused on women investors because men used to do uh, much of the investing for women yeah. those days. Even today we find uh, that, but we wanted to especially focus uh, uh, them, especially those women who, who are salaried people. You know. um, then for a long time, I think uh, four or five years, we carried out this financial literacy and seeing the kind of work that we were doing, NSC and Ministry of Corporate Affairs also joined hands and uh, supported us in a large way. But today, um, SEBI, AMFI, um, the exchanges, they are all doing this investment campaigns. You must be seeing a lot of ads in the yeah. papers. Huh? So a lot of active campaigns are now happening in the field, uh, trying to promote investments in the uh, uh, mutual funds, SIPs, even equities. I see some advertisements. Now there. Yeah. Are we still continuing uh, those financial literacy programs? Oh yes, we are still continuing with it, but in a different format. Um, we conduct such uh, conduct programs known as investor awareness programs uh, in wherever our branches are located. Um, so uh, mostly it is conducted for our uh, the referrals of our clients. You know, so uh, clients would want to uh, bring their friends and acquaintance to attend uh, such programs, and they are invited to uh, bring them over. So it's also open for the larger public to come and it's, it's free of cost. Uh, anybody who wants to attend such programs only need to contact our nearby branch and ask them the location date, etc. It would be made available. So then such programs are also now conducted in corporates, uh, you know, where large number of uh, employees uh, uh, would be uh, available for listening to such programs. So are we getting good participation? In all oh, those yes, programs. Oh, yes, because um, every month, you know, at least uh, 20 to 30 programs are conducted on an average uh, uh, numbers. A um, lot of people attend at least at, in every program, you know, it's reported that around 200 to 300 people attend. And people want to know more about this. They really consider uh, investing in uh, shares as a remunerative, uh, you know, avenue for investment. And they, people are keen to understand what it is all about. Uh, as I told before, as I told in the beginning, mm -hmm. that uh, most of the people, are young people are not much aware about the uh, roles, positions uh, a financial sector has, a financial firm, services firm has. So can you tell me what are the roles and positions we provide? In the branch level, we have, uh, you know, the branch manager, the dealer who executes the transactions, uh, then the financial consultants who gives advice to the clients, you know, as to where they can invest, etc. Uh, and in the head office, we have uh, several supportive departments like the uh, depository, risk management department, compliance, um, call center. All uh, several departments are here, which supports the activities in the branch. So, in both uh, branch as well as in the head office, we take people. Uh, mostly we prefer to take people with commerce, economics and mathematics uh, background. Uh, MBAs are also taken. That's how it is. Okay. So working in a financial services firm, can, uh, can it help a person to be financially sound in any way? Oh yes. Um, actually, um, uh, in fact, uh, I would say, you know, after the financial literacy campaigns, we we have been conducting. Um, uh, we are focusing uh, on p making people more, uh, uh, you know, uh, self-dependent. Huh? Uh, we are advising, the, we have a financial planning tool, for example. So we encourage uh, people to go and make use of the financial planning tool and make uh, investments by themselves. You don't, they don't have to really rely on anybody else, you know. The employees. Not, not employees, I'm talking about the larger public. Okay, okay. So we have a financial planning tool. We have our own trading platform, our own investment platforms. So uh, the, uh, you know, people can actually learn, you know, how to go about investing by themselves. They don't have to depend on uh, anybody else. They only need to make use of our research reports. 
So, uh, that is one thing uh, we are doing. Um, to become financially sound, it is really possible irrespective of which sector you are working in, whether it is finance sector, whether in uh, medical or what, uh, whatsoever. Only thing is, uh, uh, to be financially sound, one has to invest wisely and regularly for the long term. I believe in the age old saying that slow and steady wins the race. I hope this short discussion with J.R. Jacob Alexander has thrown some light on the employment opportunities offered by the financial sector. Thank you. <laughs>